What's up everybody, it's Victon here with another 3.17 League Starter Build Guide, and we have got a classic one for you guys, the Golem, Necromancer, and Elementalist. This one will be a 3 for 1 guide. I've got a tanky Necromancer, which is actually my recommendation, and then also a DPS version in a Necromancer, and also an Elementalist version. And something else I've done with this guide is we are going back to our roots. I've got some extra fancy guide material in here, and I've really tried to give you guys everything possible that you need to know about this build, from League Starter up to the in-game version. So don't click around the video just yet, I want to go over what this build has to offer, so you guys can get in a good idea of everything that is actually in this guide. I of course have the POB for you guys, but this time around I've also included a full written leveling guide for all of your gems, all nice and color coded, in the notes section, so check that out if you're interested. From there, we'll go over the gem links, and I've got one page cheat sheets, so you guys can leave it up on a side screen as a sort of cheat sheet, like I said, where you can kind of go through the acts and have it up on a side screen and know what you actually need to get. Very useful, and it's actually something that I do myself while leveling. I also have updated my leveling loot filter specifically for this build, so you guys can check that out if you want a filter to help you guys with easily finding the right color sockets for your build as you level. I've also included in the loot filter some things for our solo cell found friends to help them out with identifying crafting bases, and all the unique items in this build are actually highlighted a different color as well, so you guys don't miss out on any of these drops as you're going. After the little filter, we're going to go ahead and talk about the gear and the upgrade paths that you're going to take from gearing this character out from a league start all the way to that in-game version of the build. Lastly, like usual, I do a spreadsheet of all the trade links from every single item that you're going to need from the build, all the way from the league start items to those in-game items. I've even gone back and saved all of those trade searches for y'all in Better POV Trader folder, which is actually a fantastic app extension that saves trade searches for you all within the POV Trading website. All in all, this guide has been designed to give you guys all the information you need so that you can know how to build your character, gear it out, and then play it to its fullest potential in a league start situation. It's a one-stop shop and I really hope it helps you guys out. Lastly, before we dive into the path of building, I just want to mention that I will be streaming on Twitch this league, so if you ever have any questions, feel free to come on over and ask away. I'm always happy to help you guys out in any way that I can with any of my builds. If you're interested in supporting the channel, I also have a Patreon link below, which is actually going to get you access to my community Discord, where I do tons of personal build reviews for you guys all the time in there. We also, of course, just have a general fantastic community, tons of folks in there ready to chat about builds and the game in general. But enough of that, let's go ahead and hop straight into the path of building. Alright, so here we are in the Necromancer tanky version of the build, which again is my recommendation out of the three POBs that I'm going to have in this guide for you guys. I'll of course go over the differences between the three here shortly. For time's sake though, I won't go over the tree too in depth here, but I will of course mention a few highlights so you guys can know how to get around the POB and also the general idea behind the build. So first and foremost, I have down here the leveling tree, all the way from level 1 up to level 95, at which point you're more into the in-game version of the build and there will be a different guide for that. Going through this will show you exactly where to put your points as you level up and exactly what order to level up your sentency points as well. Now, for the build itself, I've opted for a tanky character that still does enough damage to get you to red maps while pretty much never dying. We're actually getting 75-74 block chance here, and like some of my other minion build starters this league, and the reason we're going to be doing that is because instead of investing into more damage like I have done in the past few leagues, uh, after thousands of hours of soft core, I'm just sick of dying, and it honestly makes the playstyle so much smoother and less hectic when you just literally never die. Luckily, I've played this build enough to know where the line is for enough DPS, and also it's going to get you to the tier 16 maps with ease. With the gear level shown here in the POB, I was able to kill Cyrus Awakener level 9 last league, Deathless. And mapping is a breeze as well with this build too, so overall a definitely a successful character. A couple points about the build here. We're going to go ahead and get life on block without needing a fancy shield by picking up some choice nodes on the tree, which is really strong for early leveling, so I quite like that. That mix with 30,000 armor and max chaos resistance, with high life regen as well, we're super tanky. And with complete poop gear, you're sitting at 5.5k life at level 95, which is also pretty solid. Damage wise, we're at 1.8 million without any investment into DPS, and after only a few medium budget upgrades, you're up to about 5 million DPS. And again, I did Cyrus 9 at about 1.8 million DPS, and it was super smooth, mostly because of how tanky I was. I could literally just run in circles and let them whittle the boss away easy PC. Anyways, back to the tree here. Honestly, it's a pretty simple tree with lots of block, minion damage, and life. The most important note here is probably Golem Commander, which you're going to get at around level 35 for plus 1 to max of golems. 
and then later on you get the determination mana efficiency node so you can run all of your auras comfortably. That's the only two kind of really important nodes here to know about. Other than that, just follow these step by step here and you will have smooth sailing. Skills you will find here, of course, and for your items, we're going to go ahead and go to this tab right here. They do have their own sections though in this guide, so we're going to skip those for now and move on to the DPS configuration. Our minions are on full life as we are benefiting from the double damage of renewal in our large cluster, so we will check that box. We have frenzy and power charges because those are coming from our carnage chieftain and host chieftains as our specters, both of which, by the way, you get from Act 7, the Ashen Fields. Your last specter will be an arena master, by the way, but those chieftains are what's giving our minions charges. They're always at two charges, but rarely we get three, so we're going to go ahead and keep it as a two here. Beating Frenzy is, of course, active, and we do have Pride Effect at Initial to get more accurate DPS number instead of that maximum, which I don't really like. And lastly, we have it as marked as a boss mob, and that's going to get us to the DPS number again that I showed you earlier. No shenanigans, pretty straightforward. Moving on to our defensive calcs, I'm going to first show you guys that this is going to be against a strong boss hit of 10,000 damage. You're going to have a solid 117 effective HP against physical hits, 200k EHP against lightning, fire, and chaos damage hits, and then 270 EHP against cold hits. Overall, very strong, and a lot of that EHP is actually coming from the block, which isn't even counting for that life gain on block, which is another super strong layer of defense. Let's hop back on over to the tree here and go over the ascendancy nodes and also the difference between the three versions of the build. First is again this one which is the necromancer tanky version and this one we're going to go with mindless aggression and then unnatural strength and then commander of darkness and lastly mistress of sacrifice which is very important because we are actually benefiting from the bone offering which is what is capping us out on our block chance and we need mistress of sacrifice to do that. Again, this is my recommended version of the build, but let's go ahead and hop on over to the DPS Necromancer version. First thing that you're going to notice is the DPS is much better at 2.6 million DPS, so almost a full million DPS higher. We got this by dropping block chance on the tree and picking up two medium clusters as well as getting flesh offering instead of bone offering. We still have okay block chance, but that's mainly coming from Tempest Shield and Rumi's Concoction. So if we move to the defense calc section, you can see it's a lot less defense than the other tanky version of the build. So again, it's really just up to your opinion here for which version you like better, and I like being a little bit more tanky. Lastly, let's cover the elementalist version. First, let's talk about the ascendancy points. We're going to grab Liege of the Primordial, and then we're going to get Elemancer second, and then Bastion of the Elements third for a super, super nice elemental damage shield. And then lastly, these two points here, because there's really just nothing else to get, which is kind of nice since your Uber Lab isn't really that important. Yeah, with this version, the damage is actually closer to the tanky Necromancer version, but even a little bit less damage than that. And if we go to the defensive counts here, you're actually going to see that it's pretty similar to that tanky version as well, because you have to factor in Bastion of Elements, which it actually does not factor in here, which is going to give us a super meaty elemental damage shield every four seconds. You also have almost 700 life regen per second, which is quite strong as well. But again, this is the lowest damage of the three, so you gotta pick which version suits your playstyle more. My recommendation, again, for the 16th time is the tanky Necromancer version. All right, very good. Let's go ahead and move on to our gem links. For our early leveling, we're gonna go with the standard Summon Raging Spirits, Infernal Legion and Minion Damage comboed with Flame Totem, Combustion, and Summon Phantasm. We're also going to have Zombies, Minion Damage, and Melee Fizz. For our auras, once you get to Act 2, you're going to pick up and use Tempest Shield and Skitterbots. Do note that you do drop Skitterbots when you get Determination in Act 3. Also remember to pick up but not level up Desecrate, keep it at level 1 for low mana cost. Then also level up a Summon Skeletons as well, we're going to potentially use it here in a little bit. Once you get your first two four links, you can actually drop your SRS setup and use Summon Skeletons if you don't have Golems yet, but if you do, go ahead and use Golems to replace those Skeletons with either Carrion or Stone Golem, whichever you prefer. Stone Golems will do more damage and give you nice life regen, but Carrion Golems actually clear maps and leveling just a little bit faster than Stone Golems do at the downside of a bit less boss DPS. Personally, I recommend Stone Golems. That will be leaked to Feeding Frenzy, Melee Fizz, and then Minion Speed until you get Multi-Strike at level 38. 
Then for our zombies in another four link, we're gonna have minion damage, melee fizz, and multi-strike. For our auras, we're gonna go with determination, dread banner, and tempest shield. And then once you get that armor mastery for 25% reduced determination mana efficiency, you can throw in your final aura, which is gonna be pride. We also need a flame dash, a molten shell, which you're gonna put on your left click, by the way, so it can auto cast, enduring cry, and convocation. In your weapons, you want to make sure that you're also leveling up Bone or Flesh Offering, depending on which version of the build you're going, and then again, that level 1 Desecrate. Lastly, your final links are going to be as following here, as you can see on the screen. Again, this is a good place to pause the video on while you're leveling, and kind of use it as a cheat sheet. One thing that I do want to mention here, though, is we're actually running a double 5 link with Golems and Zombies, which is a little interesting, and we have never really done before on this channel. It's actually more damage to do this than add a 6 link for our Golems. And it's going to give us more minions as well, which is a nice little extra defensive layer in itself. I would only do this, though, once you get a 6 link. If you have a 5 link, just use your Zombies in your 5 link and Golem in a 4 link. And that is until you get your Primordial Jewels, and then you can do golems in that five link and zombies in the four link. Then again, once you get to the six link, go ahead and do the zombies and golem combo there for a solid boost to your damage. And that covers it for gems, so let's go ahead and move on to the custom leveling loot filter. Alright, so for our custom leveling loot filter, you're actually going to go to the description of this video and you're going to find the link to my profile up here, which is going to take you directly to all of my filters. The one that we're going to be wanting to use for this golem build is the very bottom here, golems leveling trade, solo self found. So for me, it says followers here, but for you, it'll actually say follow in green there. So you're going to click that and it will automatically save it to your game. So from there, we're going to go ahead and go back to our game and I'll show you how to actually use it. You're going to want to go to options. And then from there, you're going to want to go to game and then you go to your list of item filters and it's going to be blue and you're going to come down here to your all your lists. I have a whole bunch, but we're going to find it right here. It says golem leveling. So we're going to click it. And then if you need to, you can hit this to refresh it. There we go. It has loaded successfully. So we're going to go ahead and show you what you guys are looking for with this item filter. So I've done a couple different things. The first and foremost is as you're leveling up in the first couple acts, you're going to be looking out for these right here, except that didn't show. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I had my Z click, so it wasn't showing stuff. Uh, very good. So you're going to see these. It's going to be like a blue beam or a red beam, and that's going to correspond to the actual links itself. So for example, a blue, blue, red is going to have a blue beam and a red, red, blue is going to have a red beam. So those are two colors that we're going to use for our three links. So you would absolutely want to look at those and or pick it up if you need it. Once we move into our four links, it's going to be actually a little bit bigger of an item, and it's going to be the same thing, red and blue beam. So you can see it's a little bit kind of bigger um, of the text, right? So there you go, so that is the three links and the four links. There's also a couple other things that I did here. Any unique that we use in this build is going to drop, not how it has that normal, you know, like kind of brown color, uh, but it's actually gonna drop like this. It's going to be a red background. If you ever see any uniques that drop with this red background, at least check it and see if it is one of the uniques that you need. For example, this rock breaker, it can only drop a clay shaper, but there are some other uniques that have the same bases and we might not need one of the bases compared to the other. Uh, but it basically just tells you, you know, like, hey, this is an item that you might need, so look at it. Uh, so pretty good there. And, and clay shaper, again, is not necessarily a mandatory item for this build, but it is a pretty solid leveling unique, so I went ahead and threw that in there. Now there's also another category I have here. It is the yellow beam. So yellow beam is two things. It'll either be a crafting recipe like this bone spirit shield. Uh, and if you guys don't know, there is a recipe to create plus one to minion gems helmets and use a bone spirit shield there. Um, so it's either gonna be a crafting recipe or it'll be items that you can chance for uniques that we might use in the build. For example, like a clay shaper is a rock breaker is the base item there. So if you're in solo self found and you really, really want a clay shaper, you can find the rock breakers. It'll have the yellow beam and you can chance them to hopefully get a clay shaper. Very good. There's one last category here that we have in the filter. Uh, any of the jewels that you're going to want to get, which we'll talk about here shortly, the primordial jewels actually can be a pretty big bottleneck for solo self found players. If you don't have the jewels, it kind of makes this build, you know, not function as well as you did as it would if you had the jewels. Uh, getting the jewels in Solo Self Found is certainly much harder than it is in Trade League. Now, the good thing is there is actually divination cards to help you out with that. So you can get, for example, this one here, a Stone Perfected, or there is another one called the Primordial, and those are actually going to drop and they're going to have 
the jewel primordial on there so it'll be any of the primordial jewels you could get primordial harmony eminence I, i'm not sure if you can actually get the anima stone i, I feel like you can or primordial might um, so farming those divination cards is absolutely what you need to do as a soul cell found player to really make this build work now these drop from any map that has a boss that is a golem so definitely go out and farm those if you need to get these jewels. And if you do want to see that on the, what it looks like on the ground, it's going to be a little bit lighter of a red color. So kind of like this one, but a little bit lighter. So you're absolutely going to want to look at all of the divination cards that have this pinkish tone and see if it's one that you need. Like the Rite of Elements gives level 21 Golem Gems. It could be any of the Golem Gems, but a nice little boost for your character if you have not gotten a level 21 gem yet. Cool. So that is the custom leveling loot filter for the Golem build. All right, so now let's go over the gear that we're gonna be using in this build. First, let's talk about the wand. We're actually gonna go with a wand that has plus one to all spell gems. It's gonna help us out with a lot of extra damage and also actually survivability for our minions. It's gonna be giving them a lot more life, so overall just a great cheap choice here. Make sure to leave an open suffix so you can get the craft on there that is trigger socketed spells when you use a skill. This is actually super important for automating several of our skills and it makes your life so much easier. Next, we have our shield, the Lion Eyes Remorse. The shield is a great cheap choice with ton of life, high armor, and block chance. You can also, of course, just go with a rare that has life and resistances if you want. Keep in mind that later on, your in-game shield will have these base stats, so something to work towards. Awaken orbing together 30% mana reservation efficiency with 3-5% life gain when you block. Of course, divine up to 5%. This is actually going to give us a crazy amount of survivability. Since we're max block, we're actually going to be recovering a ton of life constantly while blocking. It also allows us to squeeze in another aura, which in this case, we're going to be getting an aspect of the spider for more damage. For our helmet, we're going to get an elder helmet, and then we're going to slam on some bound fossils to get it up to at least plus 2 to minimum gym levels and life as well as one resistance and make sure you get an open prefix though so you can craft on plus one to maximum zombies. Next, our body armor is super easy to craft yourself, just greed fossils since we're only gonna need life, dex and strength and some chaos resistance if you can get that there too. Easy peasy and cheap. Moving on to our gloves, we have life, dex and two resistances with one open prefix so that we can craft on minion damage. And remember to try to get these items on armor bases if you can. For our boots, we're going to go with life, move speed, and chaos resistance with an open suffix, so you can again hopefully craft on some chaos resistance on top of that. For our amulet, we're going to get one with dex and int for the base, or at least dex, and then ideally we're also going to want to get one with life and plus one to maximum zombie, or if you can get one with plus one to level of intelligence or strength gems, depending on if you have stone or carrying golems, or even plus one to physical gems, then you should use those instead of the plus one zombie and hopefully also have an open suffix to craft on resistances plus chaos resistance. For your amulet anoint, we're going to want to anoint Testudo, which is super cheap at clear, brown, and black for 5% block and 30 life gain when you block. Great enchant, get this on as early as you can. Moving on to our first ring here, we're ideally going to get an unset ring, but if you can't get it, honestly, it's just fine. We're going to get a good amount of dex here, which is going to help us because we do need that to run a couple of our gems. We also have a bit of life, one resistance, and then crafted chaos res and a res. Keep in mind that if you can get enough chaos res elsewhere on your gear, I would actually suggest going with plus one to minimum endurance charge for the craft there instead. For our second ring, we're gonna get an amethyst ring for all that juicy chaos res. We got a bit of life here with one res and then crafted on there res and chaos res. As you guys can kind of tell, these items are pretty solid, but also pretty basic and pretty cheap. Uh, it's pretty easy to manage to get these on a leak start scenario. For the belt, try and get a Stygian Vice here, but if you can't, honestly, that's fine as well. Uh, just get life, two resistances, and again, craft on res plus chaos res. And you guys might be noticing a pattern here. It's actually pretty straightforward to get all of the res and chaos res you need to cap. For our large cluster jewel, we're going to be going with ideally an 8 passive if you can afford it, but if not, a 9 passive is just fine. And we're going to be getting renewal and rotten claws to nearly cap out our impale chance for our minions. Now moving on to the most important items of the build and the items that put this at a medium budget as a league starter compared to a super cheap league starter. It's not too much more expensive, but I do call it a medium budget league starter. All of the primordial jewels. Now the crappy part about this is that it varies so much with the prices between different leagues. It's hard to give you guys a good idea of what they're going to cost, but typically you can get a full set of them for about two exalts, maybe a little bit less if you buy them in the first four days of a league. And anytime after that, they actually go down in price quite significantly. 
So first, I would actually buy a Primordial Might. This is going to make your golems aggressive and is a great gem to get first. It's also the most expensive one, so go ahead and get that one out of the way. I actually suggest getting two of these first, since you're going to need that second one to craft out an Anima Stone, which we're going to talk about here shortly. Next, get a Primordial Harmony, and then get a Primordial Eminence. Once you have your first set, buy another set, so you'll end up with actually having two set, one of each. Take one of these sets and vendor them. It's actually a vendor recipe that's going to make the Anima Stone. That's going to save you a ton of currency instead of just buying the Anima Stone straight up. Now these jewels actually have some divination cards, which is pretty cool, and I've highlighted those a different color in the custom loot filter, so check that out if you want to farm them. These cards actually drop in any map that has a golem as the boss. And then once you have the Anima Stone, you have a full set. Having that full set is going to get you plus two to maximum golems, which is going to put us at four carrying golems or stone golems, depending on which one you chose, and that's going to up your DPS significantly. We do have one last unique jewel here called Anatomic Knowledge, a great cheap jewel that's going to give us a couple hundred life, not too bad. Make sure to slot that in exactly where I have it on the POB though, and it's going to get max value out of... Make sure you slot it exactly where I have it in the POB though to get maximum value. Moving on to our flask, we're going to have a Rumi's Concoction for armor and block chance. We also get a taste of hate for fantastic defenses. And for the last three flasks, we're going to go with an Enduring Eternal Mana Flask, and ideally of the Mage for reduced mana cost, but the most important part there is the Enduring Mana Flask part. This helps us sustain our mana, and honestly is more of a personal preference though. If you think you're okay with mana, then you can go ahead and get a Quartz Flask instead. Then we're going to get a Basalt Flask with extra armor. We're going to get the enchant that is used when charges reach full to automate that flask. Then lastly, we get a Quicksilver Flask with reduced cursed effect on it. And that is it for our items, but before we go on to the next section here, let's go over a few tips for our solo cell found friends. Again, remember this custom loot filter that I have made for this build has special colors for all the items you want to chance. They are little yellow beams that shoot from the item. The filter also highlights all unique items that are used in the build, so you can make sure to check all of those that have that different color. It's actually a red color instead uh, to see if it's the actual unique that you want. The Primordial Jewels are the real bottleneck of this build for solo cell found players, so I would absolutely suggest farming the Primordial Divination cards. That's going to be a huge help for that, so go farm those maps that have the Golem bosses and start collecting the Primordial Divination cards. All right, that's it for the gear section. So let's move on to the trade links where I'm going to talk a little bit more about the upgrade paths for your gear. So here we are in the Google Doc sheet I've made for you guys. As you can tell, it's got a whole bunch of good info here. Like for bandits, we're going to kill all of them for the skill points. Our bad map mods are no regen and the worst being physical damage reflect. Definitely try and stay away from those. Our amulet, we're going to anoint with Testudo, which again is a gray, brown, and black oil, so very cheap. I've got all three POBs linked here, and I've got a link to the better POB trading link, which we'll talk about here shortly. I've linked to the Animate Guardian gear guide as well for when you eventually get up your Animate Guardian, and I list out your specters. But now on to the real reason for the spreadsheet, all of the trade links that you're going to need for this build, ranging from League Start items all the way up to your in-game items. And to use it, just click on these links here, and it's going to take you right to the item on the actual official trade website. Pretty cool, and it's all in one place, so I try to make it as easy for you guys as possible to progress your characters. Alright, so that is the spreadsheet, which a lot of people like using, but I do have another option for you guys if you prefer the Better PoE Trading app extension. You can use this in Chrome, or like I have, in Opera GX. I will show you guys how to get it real quick, and also show you guys how to use it. So first go to the link in the description of this video and we're going to go ahead and click that and then download it right here. And then we're going to go ahead and add it to your extension browser, enable it if it asks you to, and then go back to your regular POE trade website. Here you're going to actually see this new tab over here and then you're going to be able to create folders by clicking here. And if you make your own or use mine, the folder is actually going to look like this. Basically it stores all of your trade searches in one easy spot directly on the POE trade website. Just click the trade link and it takes you right there. Super useful and I personally use this method for all of my builds. Now to import my Skelly Mage folder that I have, you're going to want to actually click the import folder button down here. And then we're going to go to the link in the description of this video and we're going to paste that into your browser. Now the pastebin link is not the code that you want to paste into the actual app. It's actually the full text of the link in the pastebin. So go back to the pastebin link and double click this right here. And then we're going to go ahead and copy that, and we're going to go back to the POE website. And then we're going to paste that text in here, and we're going to click Save, and there you go. Easy as that. Alright guys, that is all I have for this build. 
That should be everything you need to know about Golems to have a successful league start. This build really excels in playstyle, where you can literally AFK some content like blight maps, or even bosses where you can kind of just run in circles while your minions do all the damage for you and you really don't even have to use your brain one bit. It's wonderful. This build also does really well as a medium investment build, so a great build to actually do in-game bosses on as well if you're going to put a little currency onto it. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy the build, and if you do, definitely let me know in the comments how it's going. See you guys in the next one.